If the defendant thinks that the court lacks personal jurisdiction, he must object in his first formal, formal response to the lawsuit. Typically, that's going to be his answer or his Rule 12 motion, which we'll discuss later. If the defendant does not object at that early stage and proceeds to defend the case on the merits, he has waived personal jurisdiction and will not be able to argue it later. Let's say that the defendant decides that it is so obvious that the court in question has no jurisdiction, he decides to simply ignore the plaintiff's lawsuit, stay home. By the way, don't try this at home. But if it happens on your exam. After a period of time, the plaintiff will ask the court to enter judgment for himself, and the plaintiff will win. After all, the defendant is not there to defend himself. The court will be obligated to consider jurisdictional questions on its own to make sure that it has jurisdiction over the defendant to issue the, to issue the decision. And the, obviously, the court won't have the benefit of the defendant's arguments, but it will have to make the best, arg the best argument for him that it can. If it thinks that it has jurisdiction, that is, if the, if the foreign court thinks that it has jurisdiction over the defendant, it enters a default judgment for the plaintiff, and the plaintiff now has to go and try and collect from the defendant. So now the defendant gets a letter in the mail from the courts informing him that he owes the plaintiff $1 million, and he finds out that the plaintiff is trying to take his stuff. What does he do? He goes to a court that has jurisdiction, a court in his own state, for example, and seeks to have the original decision dismissed for lack of personal jurisdiction. If the new court, his court, the court of his choosing, agrees with him, it can refuse to honor the judgment of the, of the out-of-state court. And this makes a lot of sense. If we don't want to force a North Carolina resident to defend a case in Arizona where he has no contacts in Arizona, it wouldn't really seem fair to make him go to Arizona to argue the jurisdictional issues. Instead, he can fight the juris jurisdictional que question in North Carolina and have the judge judgment against him rendered unenforceable. But what if the North Carolina, disagrees with the, North Carolina court disagrees with the defendant? and finds that, the, finds that the Arizona court was correct about personal jurisdiction. Then North Carolina is obligated by the full faith and credit clause of the US Constitution, Article 4, Section 1, to honor the Arizona judgment. As a result, it has to enforce the judgment on the merits as well. The defendant loses without ever having, to defend, ever having the opportunity to defend himself. He may not litigate the underlying question, the merits question, that is whether there was a breach of contract or a tort dispute. In North Carolina, Arizona, or anywhere else for that matter. So let's say the defendant knows this rule, doesn't want to lose his chance to fight on the merits. So he goes to Arizona to litigate on the merits, but doesn't want to raise the jurisdictional issues. He wants to save that for his home court in North Carolina. If he loses in Arizona on the merits and does not timely raise jurisdiction early in that dispute, he will have waived it. And so when he goes back to North Carolina now and wants to raise personal jurisdiction in that court, the North Carolina court is again going to be bound by the Arizona court. It will not hear his argument on personal jurisdiction. He will not get a second bite at the jurisdictional apple. So let's say he goes to Arizona to litigate the jurisdictional issues. He goes out there and loses on jurisdiction. He cannot go back to North Carolina to fight on jurisdiction a second time. That might not seem fair. By hypothesis, Arizona has exceeded its constitutional powers. It shouldn't have the authority to, to adjudicate the defendant's dispute over personal jurisdiction. The reason we bar him from doing it again in North Carolina is to avoid relitigation and redundancy and to protect the plaintiff's right to choose among the available courts. We want the defendant to be able to object if the plaintiff has, has gone too far in choosing his courts, but we don't want to give him two chances, nor, we don't want, nor, we don't, nor do we want him to stifle the plaintiff's choices and where to file or force redundant litigation. So we let the defendant challenge, challenge the jurisdictional issue in his home court if he wants to. But the trade-off is that he has to accept the out-of-state court's jurisdiction on the merits if he happens to lose on the jurisdictional question at home.